Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg with me, Daniel. We're back today for part 11 and my worst fears are being realised, but on the pitch is a very exciting day. We've got a chance in the second of today's doubleheader to win our first big trophy of the save and also with it qualified for the Europa Conference second qualifying round, but we've also established a commanding lead at the top, and it's not because we've done anything spectacular, but none of the other sides even close to two points a game, which is really holding the rest of the league back. However, it's hammer beat in both games today. They can close the gap with a win in the Swedish league, then they can stop us from getting into Europe and winning a trophy. So if you're looking forward to finding out if they can, and you are enjoying the series, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Not a good sign that the voice is going in the first two minutes, but if you want to stay up to date and find out if it survives the day, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Daily FM22 content with the Hemel save returning tomorrow. And of course, in the eye above, there's links to the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store too. You can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But let's get straight into this one because it's been a very interesting spell actually the last few weeks because... We only played two games off camera and they've become relatively comfortable. So you can see that following the Nurkapin game last time, we won 2-0 at Ostersunds with Daniel Rios and Adam Kaid getting the goals for a rotated side. Against Gothenburg, it was Vandenhoek and a brace from Hendrickson. We're going to be going for a reserve side today. I know it's a risk, but... Winning the cup and getting into Europe is the most important thing we can do in this save. A quick shout out as well in the comments. I think it was Andy who mentioned that the reason we've got this fixture congestion because it's actually because of the Winter World Cup, isn't it, in 2022. So hopefully next season we'll be back to sort of one game a week and finishing in November again. And that will actually benefit the other teams in the league because the reason we're further ahead this season and the reason we've been able to do so well is definitely, without doubt, because the AI managers just can't handle rotating the squad. It's infuriating. It's the one thing I hope is fixed for next year. But we are starting to see some really good signs. And crucially against Gothenburg, we had over 11,000 through the gate. So the crowds are starting to increase as well. We can only focus on our job. And our job is being done really well at the moment. I do expect us to struggle today. Hammerby will have had a week off before this. They're going to be playing their first team. But I'm hoping that will then benefit us on Thursday night. So let's go through to the fixtures for the first of today's games. We're not far from the summer transfer window, of course. The first season where we're going to see a whole fleet of release players from the UK clubs. And maybe we'll be able to pick up one or two to help our squad along. There's a couple we might be looking to let out as well. So away to Hammerby, it's going to be a big one. Over 20,000 through the gate today. They're playing our least favourite tactic to come up against as well with that box midfield. And the director of football, or the assistant manager, sorry, recommending 11 changes from our usual team. But the reason we've picked this side is so we win the cup. That is my main priority. The one injury is yet again Netabai. Really good player when he's featured for us so far. Just cannot stay fit. It's such a shame. Only three sub appearances and two goals in that time as well. We have got Rasmus Johnson back. Will probably be one of his last appearances for the club at 32. But the 11 for today is Lindegaard back in goal. It's all about experience and reserves today. Tersic and Sivis are the fullbacks with Person alongside Garnas as centre half. Valencia, Velokia, and Johnson, the midfield three, with Lundberg, Adam Kaid, who's been in brilliant form, and Daniel Rios, who's now got a goal at last up front on his own. So hopefully we can at least put up a competitive display. But I'd really expect that in the circumstances with a week's rest, our hosts are probably going to have the better of us today. So let's go and get into the first of the two games. Same opponent, the warm-up, the dress rehearsal for the big occasion. But can we put in a decent effort and maintain our lead at the top of the Swedish table? Well, I think our respective priorities are highlighted here. One change for Hammerby, who are trying their best to close the gap. And I mentioned it at the top, but four points is the difference if Hammerby win this with the same games played. No way is it over at this stage. However, we've made nine changes. We are nowhere near full strength. A centre-half person is probably the weakest player in the team, mainly because of injury problems he's had over the last year or so. We're not the most cohesive in midfield. I don't think that three will have ever played together before. And going forward, well, it's players that have largely been out of form. But with two minutes gone, we've got a free kick with Lundberg. Headed away at the back post, but Kaid back in. And he's cleared downfield by Hammerby. I have found away from home it's been a lot easier to hit teams on the counter. I don't know if it's high defensive lines for players that maybe shouldn't have one, but 
It certainly has been a bit easier than at home at times. As Fingers got the ball back to his keeper. I'm sure Hammerbeat will beat us 3 or 4-0 now just for saying that today. But we expect it with the side we've put out. We're competitive, but we've definitely got some weaknesses. As Ludvigsen puts it into Basara and Colander almost in the back of the net. Lindergaard down a little bit slower than he used to get down. But it's just wide of the post. Stays 0-0 and we're playing out from the goal kick as Garnas gives the ball to Tersic. I've got to say, I do like episodes like this when we can just focus on the on-pitch action. As Kaid releases Rios, he's got his first goal now. Will he become the superstar I'd once hoped? Not with shots like that. Straight at the keeper, pretty feeble effort. We've seen an awful lot of this. This has been a two-minute highlight. It's got to end with Sunning. As Rios puts in Lundberg, edge of the box is forced wide. Chance to cut back and cross into Rios. Oh, it's the old London buses, isn't it? When one comes along, you're going to get a hat full. And Rios has got his second goal in two games. And I wonder if this is liftoff for him. Though we're back just a few minutes later. Looks like it's going to be a good game this. Because Hammerby trying to play out from the back. And they're going to create chances against our makeshift defence. As Nilsson gets down the right. It's a great challenge from Tersic. Garnas goes long. But only as far as Sadiku, a centre half for the hosts. Into Svedberg and out to Basara. Giazzi on the left. Through ball to Ludvigsen. It's a brilliant move. I mean, the difference so far is they've not been clinical. Two chances just wide of the post, but they really are creating good opportunities as we come out from the left-hand side. This has got the makings of like a 4 all or something ridiculous, hasn't it? As Valencia at the back. Not even 10 minutes on the clock. And we've been here watching most of the game. Tersic into Kaid to Rios. Holds up well back to Valencia and Kaid again. Big switch of play to Lundberg. There's gaps in that defence. Get in behind on the right-hand side where they've pushed the wing-backs high. Our back three has got loads of space. Oh, sorry, our front three has got loads of space against theirs. That cross is headed just wide. No shot on target for Hammerby. It's the only real difference in this game. So we're back with 25 minutes on the clock and they are on the front foot here again. Ludvigsen puts a cross in for Colander. And again, hedge just over. It's another good chance. Their expected goals from the same number of shots is significantly higher. But at the moment, we're managing to take our chances. And Rios, that's why we signed him. As Tosic plays out from the left-hand side to Velokia. Has really improved the squad depth in the middle of the park. The signings today as Kai gets it into Rios again. Forced wide a little bit. Back to Velokia. Into Lumber. Good challenge. Thought there was going to be a penalty there, but wouldn't have been justified. It was a great bit of defending. Long ball forward is headed away by Person, but only as far as Basara. Hammerby on the front foot. It's an end-to-end -end game. Down the left he goes. Back to Giazzi. Great ball in for Colander. And he made the run. It was a blindside one. Everyone was focused on the centre forward, who I think was offside in a box. And with the keeper, Lindegar, caught in no man's land. Colander, deservedly I'd say, gets an equaliser for Hammerby. And here they come again with Ludvigsen. Is there a risk we collapse here? Ten minutes to the break. We've just got to hold on to half time. As Fenger on the right to Colander. White to Nilsson. To Colander again. They're keeping the ball so well. We see a lot more teams playing shorter, more technical football than we often do in England. Particularly in the lower leagues and in most of the UK in fairness. As Fenger again back to his keeper. They're in no rush to build up here. And they're in no rush to go long. As they play out to the back three again with Sadiku. Over halfway to Basara, through to Ludvigsen, it's a brilliant move. Person chases him out wide, but it goes to Giazzi. Chance to cross, he's delivered a few good ones already. That one's not bad either. And that is the most comical of own goals. The centre forward for Hammerby was nowhere near it. And he'll be wondering when he turns around how on earth that's ended up in the back of the net. Lindegaard, I don't know what he was doing, dived at nothing. And then it just hit Tersic back of the head and went in. Why he hadn't got in the right positional move, I don't know. But we're back on the front foot with Kaita, Rios and Velokia. That's wonderful football. And Rios has skied it over the bar. This is a wonderful game. How Hammerby a 2-1 up from one shot on target. I mean, it's laughable, really. Some, some of the own goals this year have been classic. You've got to give us that. But at half time, we do trail, despite maybe it deserving to be level. So let's ask the lads to prove a point. In the end, it doesn't matter if we lose this, but let's get into the second half and see if we can react. Well, just over an hour on the clock, we've got a couple of injury problems. Kaid really struggling. Maybe one of the few that would have been considered to start in midweek, so that's annoying. Tahar Ali on for him. I'm going to replace the whole left wing. Tersic off after his own goal. Hadjin will replace him. And I'm looking at one more, thinking ahead to midweek. And I'm looking at perhaps one of the centre midfielders. So I think we're going to take off Valencia for Landgren. 
He doesn't play much anyway. And for Valencia, it gives us a solid backup in the centre of midfield. 25 minutes left. I expect nothing from the game. It's probably good for the Swedish title race, but the circumstances that caused it, certainly frustrating. That's fair to say. Well, on the front foot come Hammerby. 10 to go. We've gone a little bit more attack in here. We're just trying to see if we can nick an equaliser. You can see the likes of Johnson, who I haven't played recently. Person, who's barely played football for a year and a half, really struggling with the fatigue now as the ball's cleared long from Hammerby. We've gone right on the front foot, so this will either be win or bust as Lundberg gets towards the byline. Ball in, headed away by Sadiku. Hadjim will recycle it. The sub left back goes back to Garnas. Got to be careful with Hadjim. If he gets a book in, it'll be suspended in midweek. As Ali gets it into Rios. Oh, some lovely football again, but no end products. And um, for the goal he's got, Daniel Rios, he probably should have had a couple more. Five minutes of stoppage time to go. I don't think it's coming. It was an even game, but the most pathetic of own goals settled it. Tursic after a Lindegaard error. And it finishes 2-1 to the host Hammerby in the dress rehearsal for the final. We'll have our first team out against them on Thursday, but they're going to make this title race a little bit tricky. Back in a moment for a chance to get to Europe. Well, this is the big one. Will the sacrifice to team selection at the weekend be worthwhile? Adam Kaid is not fit after his knock at the weekend, as we look to bounce back against the same opponents, Hammerby, but this time in the Swedish Cup final. Now, you may think, what on earth are a newly promoted side doing here? But don't forget, after the group stages, none of last year's top three were in the quarterfinals. We put one of them out in the group stages with a gritty 1-0 win. And the rest of the campaign, to be honest, has been a little bit topsy-turvy. We had a close 3-2 in one of the matches, but this game is going to be the toughest for sure. The assistant is recommending 10 changes. We'll make those and then have a look at the team selection. Are we at home? It says 16,000 and that's our capacity. I mean, it'd be lovely if we are. Everyone seems to be playing the tactic against us. Hammer beat doing it for the second game in a row. So let's see who he kept in. It's Tursic. No, no, no. Hadjin's coming in. We're not having Tursic after that last game. I probably do need to play a sub goalkeeper today, albeit Lindegaard wasn't great in the week. So let's see who would miss out as a result. Netabai and Kaida injured. Johnson's not fit enough. So it's probably Sivis who would have normally been on the bench. But with Tursic, maybe I put him on and then I've covered the three defensive positions. We've also got Lindegaard as the goalkeeper, Velokia and Valencia as the midfielders, and then Lundberg and Rios as the attacking option. So the substitutes bench is good. Our starting eleven has got some interesting news because for the first time, we were asked about Kasper Weidel being eligible for Sweden and should he get a call up. And I said, of course he should. And I immediately followed that with a new contract offer. I know he had one last year. But if he signs it, it will be a £300 a week pay rise, but he'll go on to a six-year deal. 2026 initially with a one-year club optional extension. That will take him up to the end of the 2027 season and probably, for me, the end of this save as well. So really important to get him tied down. I want him to be the star of the save. But for today, he's in a team that's got to win a Swedish Cup final. He's in that starting eleven. It's Jolson back in goal. Granaf and Hadji in the fullbacks with Weyberg and Vidal, the ever-reliable centre-half partnership. Alma Jed, Hendrickson and Lingman, the original three back in centre midfield with Lerpa, Ali and Vandenhoek up front. And if you look at the star ratings, actually, it does show just how strong this team was to start with. I think we undervalued how strongly they're rated in FM. The two fullbacks are the only players that weren't in the team when we got here. This hasn't been about great recruitment, other than making the squad a bit stronger. This has been about developing already very good players. And again, Grangfist takes credit because he's brought in some good coaching and recruitment team members as well. But we had the base of this side here. The two fullbacks are no, by no means star players. They're just improvements on what we had. But this is a really big defining game for this save. If we go into Europe this early, we might even have to change the end objectives. Maybe look to compete for Europa Conference before the end of the save. For now though, it's all about winning that first big trophy. The Swedish Cup final against Hammerby. They beat us at the weekend, but we've made 11 changes. Will they pay off? Let's go and find out. Well, we have managed to get home advantage for the Swedish Cup final. Being played on a Thursday night, which is a little bit off as well. But it's a very good Hammerby side. It's very similar to the team that played in the weekend. The interesting things is I would say their strength was definitely at left wing back with Giazzi, who delivered great balls. He's not even in the squad by the looks of things. Nilsson drops out, as does Sadiku, who I thought was really solid at the back. 
I'm going to have to see if Giazzi's got a knock or something, because either the first choice player is back, or that really doesn't make sense. Let's go and have a look at the opposition. So the man who's come in is Sal, who's not match fit, but is a very good player. What's Giazzi like, and why is he not even on the bench? Oh, he's injured. And he's a very good player as well. Iraq International, on 1.7 grand a week, picked up a seven-week back fracture. That is not good. Nilsson picked up an injury as well, so actually... It's not through choice, a lot of this. The only one that was, though, was the centre-half, Sadiku. He's on three and a half grand a week. He's a cost of an international. He's a very good footballer, albeit a holding midfielder. So I'm a little surprised by some of those changes. But they're on bigger money. They're a bigger side on paper. That Sal who's come in is on nearly five grand a week. So let's get through the dressing room. Let's see if we can right the wrong of the weekend. And let's hope without Lindegaard and Tursic on the pitch, we won't have the same error that cost us the last game. Swedish Cup final time. Cross your fingers, everyone. Well, a very quiet 11 minutes to start the game as we've had one shot, I think, on the stats, but seen nothing. Now we're playing out from the back and Hadjin has it on the left to Lingman. To Tahar Ali, who's just gone into his shell a little bit again for the first time since the middle of last season. Now playing with Hadjin down the left-hand side. Finds Ali by the byline. Chance to cross. Lerper's in there. It's almost an own goal. The defender felt like he had to stick out a leg, slide in and try and stop it from going to Lerper at the back post. And it was almost one of those, the old Lauren Koscielny I used to call it. He used to do it quite a lot with his left foot. But he's a good save by the keeper. Keeps it on the line and now we've got an injury and it's at left back for Hadjin. So Tursic, the man who got the own goal at the weekend, the only man who the assistant thought we should have started that we didn't, is on the pitch with half an hour gone. But it's been a nothing game. And those of you that have followed the Hemel save this year will know we've made a bit of a habit of playing awfully in cup finals. It's not always affected the result, but we've often played awfully. Here we've had the better of the stats, but we've not seen a lot of it. The only chance that we've seen in a highlight was basically created for us. So we're going to get most of the lads motivated. But cup finals often are this way. They're cagey. They're about staying in the game. And then late on, hoping you can have the moment of magic. We've got 10 minutes gone in the second half. We're into double figures on the shot count. But we don't seem to be creating anything special. So let's try and really make an impact here. We're going to encourage the lads. Give them five more minutes. And then perhaps we have to think about subs. Hendrickson on a yellow and not playing well in the middle. This is a chance for Jodan Valencia. And we've also got to go for... I think Vandenhoek for Rios. It's a massive call. But Rios is a good player. He's starting to get in the goals. And we've got a chance to make him a hero tonight. Let me just check it is three subs. It is. You can't make any more at the minute. So with that done, we've made a couple of attacking changes. And hopefully they're going to have an impact. But the goals are not forthcoming. And as a result, we've got extra time. Now we have a decision to make. Do I change the players who are playing the worst or the ones that are the most tired? Because Lerper, Lingman, Vidal, all struggling. Probably our three best players. What do I do with them? Tahar Ali's nervous off the left. Let's take him off. You can't even make one for extra time. I've not seen a competition recently where you can't make a fourth sub in extra time. So we're going to stick with what we've got. We're encouraging the lads. We're positive. We're trying everything we can to get them on the front foot. But I've got a horrible feeling that they're going to cling on. Hammerby, fair play to them. They've got a great defensive shape. And they're taking this one all the way to penalties. But they've got a throw on the left-hand side here. Are they going to attack? It's on the right, sorry. Solar switch sides. If we lose this, it will be heartbreaking because we have been so dominant. Hammerby have been defensively structured. They've, they've tried to Jose Mourinho the final here and I'm a big admirer of that. Secretly, the discipline is something we don't get to see very often as Granath mops up there. Goes back to his keeper, Jolson. Just don't do anything stupid. If we're going to lose it, I want it to be a moment of magic rather than an awful mistake. As Weber goes all the way back to Jolson again. Out to Vidal at centre-half. Looking at it the other way, a late win in extra time would be spectacular. As Lerper, out to Granath on the right. Into Vidal again. And Valencia, big switch to Tahar Ali. He's in behind here. Forced a little wide, hits the post. It says the keeper makes a good save. He must have got a fingertip to it. If so, wonderful goalkeeping. And with 10 minutes to go in extra time, we reach 20 shots for the game. The expected goal is one and a half, but we have got nothing to show for it. And bear in mind as well, if you look at losing this game, which we may well do if we go to penalties, or we could do late in extra time, look at the knock-on effect. Our best chance of Europe is then the league. 
We've then got a game in three days. None of these players are going to be fit. We're going to have to play the backup team again and possibly lose. But hang on a minute because Hammerby are in down the left. Khalil to Selmani. It's a good save from Jolson. Penalties on the horizon. But my word, we are not winning this league game, are we? And here it is. It's settled on a lottery. We need some goalkeeping heroics. Not good that the goalkeeper is anxious ahead of this shootout. Lingman, Lerpa, Valencia, Rios and Almajed are the first five. We've then got the two centre-halves who aren't the best penalty takers but are in good spirits. Then we've got Granath. Then I'm going to go Tahar Ali. And then I'm going to go for Tersic, who's looking a bit anxious. Followed by the keeper if we really need him. Into the penalty kicks we go. We're going to tell the lads, do the best you can. We're in front of our own fans. And we need Jolson to be a hero. He's a good young keeper. He's anxious. He's a big game. He only became first choice two months ago. The first one, though, he doesn't even need to save. Smashes into the post. Bounces back out rather than in. Maybe that's a good sign. Though Lingman's up first for us. Needs to give us the advantage. Tries to go down the middle. Give the keeper the eyes. Smashes it high down the middle. And it is straight at the keeper's arms who doesn't dive. Now it's Khalili for Hammerby. Sends the keeper the wrong way. The first bit of composure we've seen all shoot out. Can Willem Lerper level it out? Or will it be Hammerby's day? That's a really good penalty. Keeper went the right way. But it's into the side netting. You're not stopping those. 1-1, one, one, back on terms. Selmani up third for Hammerby. Jolson's dancing around like a lunatic. Oh, what a save that is. That isn't a poor penalty. That's going almost top corner. Tips it over the bar, flying up to his right-hand side. And now Valencia can give us the lead, which he does. Not the best penalty in the world. A little central for my liking. But the power just took it past the keeper before he could react. Jolison is up next. Jolson standing still this time. He's obviously done his research because he dives down low to his left and saves. And surely with that, surely our name's written on the trophy now. We only need one of the next three things to go our way. If Rios scores here, who's had a poor start to life here, he struggled a bit, but he could score the winning goal that wins us the cup and sends us into Europe. Daniel Rios does it. Smashes it as hard as he can, just left of centre. And as a result, on penalties, deservedly so, given the performance over the 120 minutes. We win the Swedish Cup. We go into Europa Conference qualifying. And we really are ahead of schedule at this point. We have been done some favours by other teams' failings earlier in this competition. But Helsingborg are the Swedish Cup champions. And they're back in European football. We have got a chance to really push on now. It's going to affect us hugely on Sunday. We will lose the league game. But what a moment to enjoy regardless. Let's get through the dressing room. Enjoy the celebrations. These are the moments we're in football for. But still not without concern, the performance. Well, there's the confirmation. Helsingborg win the Swedish Cup. We've got an injury to Hadjin. Not that anyone who played tonight is going to be featuring on Sunday. We're praised by the supporters. We're praised by the board. And most importantly, financially for the club and moving forward, Helsingborg are qualified for the Europa Conference. And every round is a bit more money into the coffers, which looking at the finances, it's going to be very much needed. But it does mean fixture congestion come July. So we're going to need some work in a summer transfer window and some additions to our already big squad. Let's have a look at the schedule for a minute. It's going to be back. Do you know what? I think we're going to do it like that because in June, we've only got two games at the moment because of the international breaks. We've got one left in May and then in July, we're going to have our qualifier somewhere around the middle there. So we're going to come back for our first European game of the save. We we'll hopefully have some transfer news as well as players get released from England and the window reopens over here. If you're looking forward to European action with Helsingborg, please do put a thumbs up on it. That airtight defence doing the job again. If you want to stay up to date and find out how we get on in our qualifying campaign, then subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. We'll have daily FM22 content from this one and the Hemel save as well. And of course, let me know down in the comments what positions you think we should be looking for. But in the meantime, there's links in the eye above to the other save playlist, to the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store too. And above my head now is the latest season of the Hemel save, which you can get your teeth sunk into until a couple of days time when we're back here for Europe with Helsingborg. <laughs>